story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called Zombievers. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Luke and Joseph are tasked by the Mamaronic Medical Research Facility to transport canisters of biological hazards for them. Unfortunately, they get into an accident when Joseph hits a deer on the road, and they fail to notice that one of their canisters fell into the river. As if that isn't enough, the canister floats downstream until it reaches the beaver dam, where it eventually leaks. Meanwhile, Jen, Zoe, and Mary decide to go to Ashwood for the weekend. Then, when they finally arrive at Mary's cousin's cabin near the lake, a friendly old lady who lives next door welcomes them and says she'd love to have them over for breakfast sometime. Sadly, once they're inside the cabin, Jen realizes there's no service because she can't text her cheating boyfriend, Sam. Mary is disappointed that Jen would even reply to Sam, saying the purpose of their trip is for her to get away from him. On the other hand, Zoe is completely irritated that there's no service, but Mary wants them to spend the entire weekend without using their phones or talking to their boyfriends. Moments later, the three girls decide to swim in the lake. They then stay on the raft while sunbathing, and that's when they notice the beaver dam. Hoping to see some beavers, the girls swim toward the dam and see traces of the toxic substance, not even knowing what it is. However, instead of seeing a beaver, the girls come across a bear. Luckily, a local hunter shows up and scares it away, telling the girls bears don't usually attack more than one or two folks at a time. Then, the hunter introduces himself as Smith, wondering what the girls are doing across the lake. Jen replies they're looking for beavers, so the man warns them to stay away from the animals because they won't hesitate to attack if threatened. After that, Smith tells them to cover up since there are kids in that neighborhood, but the girls don't appreciate the unsolicited advice and just leave. That night, the girls play a silly little game while drinking beer and eating some popcorn. Then, they suddenly hear banging noises on the door, so Zoe goes out to check what it is. Unable to find the source of the noise, Zoe decides to walk around the area while Mary and Jen wait for her by the porch. However, they get scared when the door suddenly closes, and they start to panic when they realize it's locked. Seconds later, Mary's boyfriend Tommy suddenly shows up to scare them, delighted to see that the girls are completely terrified. At the same time, Zoe's boyfriend Buck walks toward the cabin while carrying her, talking about the girls' lame rule that no guy should join them for the weekend. Then, Sam comes out of the cabin and tries to make up with Jen, leaving Mary annoyed. She makes it clear that the guys aren't invited there and tells them to leave, worried about Jen's feelings, but Jen says it's okay for them to stay. Once they're inside the cabin, the couples immediately go to their rooms to make love to their respective partners, but Jen and Sam remain in the living room. Of course, the situation is utterly awkward for them, but Jen isn't in a forgiving mood and wants to know who Sam's other girl is. However, instead of answering Jen's question, Sam tries to justify his actions by saying he was really drunk when he kissed that other girl. Unfortunately, this only upsets Jen, so she slaps Sam not only once but twice. Sam then tries to win Jen's heart by kissing her and reminding her of what they have, but Jen nonchalantly knees him on the groin before going to her room. Meanwhile, Tommy notices that Mary is a bit distracted. He asks her if she even finished, but Mary doesn't answer his question directly and says she's just worried about Jen. However, Tommy already knows what that means. In the bathroom, Jen is about to take a shower when she suddenly hears noises from the bathtub. She immediately gets pissed because she thinks it's just Buck, but when she pulls back the shower curtain, she sees a rabid beaver. The beaver tries to attack Jen, but she luckily manages to get away and run to the living room, where Sam asks her what's happening. Jen is too distraught to explain, so Sam can't understand what she's saying, and it isn't long before their friends hear the commotion and come out of their rooms. Then, when Jen says there's a wild beaver in the bathroom, they just mock her. Exasperated, Jen tells them to look in the bathroom, so they all slowly make their way there. With the bat, Sam cautiously walks toward the bathroom, but Tommy realizes he's scared. He then takes the bat from his friend and opens the bathroom door, but they see no signs of the beaver. Of course, the goofy buck makes fun of Jen, and that's when the beaver suddenly comes out of the cabinet and tries to attack him. Realizing Jen is telling the truth, Tommy repeatedly hits the beaver with the bat until it's no longer moving, leaving everyone in a state of shock. Moments later, Tommy puts the beaver in a garbage bag and just throws it on the porch. Then, he goes inside and talks to his friends about the beaver, and they all wonder if it had rabies. Mary and Jen are sure that it wasn't a normal beaver because it didn't have pupils, but Sam believes the animal was just sick. Worried, Jen thinks they should just go home, ignoring Buck's protests. So, Mary tells them it's better if they call it a night, and Jen says she's sleeping with her. Unfortunately, they are unaware that the beaver in the garbage bag is still alive. The next day, Smith is setting up a bear trap in the woods when he hears an animal growling in the distance. Distance. However, he doesn't see anything, so he just continues what he's doing before leaving. Meanwhile, Jen and her friends realize that the beaver is out of the garbage bag, so Tommy says some wild animal probably came and took it. Still, Jen has a bad feeling about it, but Sam thinks they shouldn't worry too much. On the other hand, Zoe and Buck can't wait to swim in the lake, and Tommy reminds them it's a beautiful day to have fun outside. Once they get to the lake, Jen chooses not to swim because she's afraid there are more beavers in the water. Tommy and Buck tease her for it, but she just ignores them. Meanwhile, Sam talks to Mary about Jen. 
asking if Jen knows she's his other girl. Of course, Mary knows that Jen will hate her once she finds out, but she isn't sure yet whether she'll tell her friend the truth. On the other hand, Tommy notices that Sam is flirting with Mary, but he doesn't say a word about it. Instead, he just invites Jen to join them in the water, and the girl eventually gives in. Unfortunately, moments later, a beaver bites Buck's foot off. Everyone starts to panic, and when the beavers also scratch Tommy, they immediately get to the raft. Another beaver manages to bite Buck on the shoulder, so Tommy grabs the animal and throws it away to help his friend. As Buck bleeds on the raft, the group realizes that there are more beavers around. Mary is confused since beavers don't just attack people, but they don't really have time to think about that because Buck will soon bleed to death. Tommy then ties Zoe's dog's vest around Buck's leg to stop the bleeding, while on the other hand, Jen returns to the cabin to call for help. However, the beavers destroyed the landline connection, so Jen fails to make a call. Then, the same beaver that Tommy repeatedly hit the previous night suddenly scratches her leg, but Jen throws it over her head and grabs a knife before getting on top of a table. Meanwhile, more beavers surround the raft, and seeing that there's nowhere for them to go, Sam throws Zoe's dog into the water to create a diversion. Zoe can only cry as her dog gets chased and eaten by the beavers, but they have no choice but to swim away quickly while the rabid animals are busy. On the other hand, the beaver follows Jen on the table, so she bravely stabs it before opening the door for her friends. That night, the rabid beavers surround the house. Then in the kitchen, Tommy and his friends try to make sense of what's happening to the beavers. They can't understand how it's possible that the beaver is still alive, so Jen says that's because it isn't. Meanwhile, Sam stabs the beaver in the neck because he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Moments later, Tommy checks if the phone is already working, only to be disappointed. On the other hand, Zoe gets mad at Sam for killing her dog and repeatedly hits him, so Mary tries to calm her down. Unfortunately, Zoe even gets angrier and reveals that Sam cheated on Jen with Mary. As it turns out, everyone knows about it except Tommy and Jen. However, Jen thinks they have bigger problems now and refuses to address the issue. After that, the beavers start attacking the cabin. At the same time, the beaver on the table suddenly moves, so Sam decapitates it and throws the head outside. Later on, they realize that Buck won't make it through the night. Jen suggests going to their neighbor and using their phone, but Sam thinks it's a bad idea with no other choice. Tommy offers to go for the car, instructing Sam to stay with the girls while he takes Buck to a hospital. Zoe then takes Buck's severed foot and decides to go with them, and no matter how much Mary tries to stop them, Tommy is determined to get Buck out of that place. With their time running out, Tommy asks for Mary's car keys and takes Buck outside, followed by Zoe. Then, once Tommy, Buck, and Zoe get in the vehicle, Sam decides to board up the door and windows to keep the beavers out. Meanwhile, the old lady next door, Mrs. Gregerson, wonders what's happening at the cabin. She wants to check up on the girls because she heard tires screeching, but Mr. Gregerson thinks they're just having a good time. Then, Mr. Gregerson accidentally touches a rabid beaver, thinking it's his dog. On the other hand, Tommy gets extremely frustrated when they find their path blocked by a fallen tree. They think that the beavers are responsible for it. But luckily, they see a truck parked on the side of the road. Tommy immediately searches the vehicle and finds an axe and some guns. So he takes the axe and gives it to Zoe, telling her to return to the cabin. Tommy plans to look for help on foot, but two beavers gnaw on a tree until it falls and crushes him. Meanwhile, Zoe cries as she looks at her dead friend, and she almost gets attacked by a beaver. Luckily, Smith arrives and shoots the animal, helping Zoe and Buck to his truck. In the cabin, Sam, Jen, and Mary are busy boarding up the place. However, the beavers are relentless in trying to get into the cabin, but they eventually leave when Smith arrives with Zoe and Buck. But since the door is already boarded up, the trio struggles to open it for their friends. So since the beavers are back, Zoe and Buck have no choice but to go to the Gregerson's house with Smith. Unfortunately, they soon discover that Mr. Gregerson is dead, and the beavers chewed on the phone line too. Meanwhile, Mary decides to read a book about beavers, and Sam tells her to look up zombie beavers. But the topic of Sam's cheating is suddenly brought up, so Mary apologizes to Jen. However, Sam believes they should first focus on surviving, rather than talking about their relationships. On the other hand, Smith finds Mrs. Gregerson's body upstairs and tells Zoe they're safe for the time being. Then, he informs her it might be impossible for them to get Buck to a hospital, adding that he can cauterize his stump as a last resort. Back in the cabin, Jen suddenly turns into a beaver-like zombie and attacks Mary. Also, some of her spit gets into Mary's mouth, so Mary tries her best to push her away and get out of bed. Then, Mary finds herself cornered, but Sam shows up and knocks Jen with a bat. At the same time, Smith prepares to cauterize Buck's stump, but he gets distracted by a growling noise outside. So Smith and Zoe look out the window to see what it is, but a zombie fight Buck attacks the local hunter. With no other choice, Zoe tries to shoot Buck, but she ends up shooting Smith. She also fails to leave the house after a beaver waiting by the door hits her foot with its tail, so she runs upstairs and locks herself in the bedroom. Unfortunately, a zombie fight Mrs. Gregerson is waiting there, and the old lady grabs a fistful of Zoe's hair. Zoe then tries to shoot her, but realizes she's out of bullets, so she jumps out of the window and loses consciousness the moment she hits the ground. On the other hand, Mary deduces that the beavers must be transmitting some kind of virus to their 
their victims, explaining Jen's transformation. Then, the beavers start breaking into the cabin through the floor, so Mary and Sam waste no time fending them off. However, one of the beavers destroys Sam's bat, but he still manages to use it as a sword to stab the rabid animal before Mary delivers the final blow using a hammer. They then lock themselves in the bathroom, realizing the beavers are everywhere. After that, Mary and Sam check each other's bodies for a scratch, thinking that's the reason why Jen transformed, but they soon just end up making love. However, while they're busy doing the deed, a beaver chewing on an electrical outlet accidentally sets the cabin on fire. Then, Jen breaks into the bathroom through the floor and bites Sam's manhood, sending Mary running for her life. As Mary looks for a way out, Zoe suddenly crashes Smith's truck into the cabin, saving her friend and immediately getting out of there. On the other hand, a zombified Smith shoots his truck, causing the girls to hit a tree. As if that isn't enough, the other zombified people start to approach them, and they see that the bear has transformed too. Luckily, they still manage to drive away, and Zoe doesn't hesitate to run Jen over when she suddenly shows up on top of the truck. Moments later, Zoe and Mary stop at where Tommy's body is and continue on foot. However, Mary gets paranoid and points a gun she got from the glove compartment at Zoe, accusing her of getting bitten by the beavers. Unfortunately, it's Mary who turns into a beaver-like zombie, so Zoe kills her with an axe and walks away, but the same truckers who dropped the canister in the river accidentally run her over. In a post credit scene, a bee returns to its hive in a zombified state after landing on a beaver's carcass. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.